Here's a question for you. Why do Neo and Smith look like laminated cards in the Burly Brawl? The answer is obvious, of course. Old CGI just doesn't age well in most cases. But what if there's an in-universe explanation that explains why the CGI in The Matrix Reloaded looks so bad sometimes? Well, today we're breaking it all down for you. Later, we'll look at some interesting Matrix theories that Resurrections prove wrong. Surprised to see me? No. Then you're aware of it. First up, the Matrix sequels had some seriously sloppy CGI in many places. The Matrix came out in 1999, but its CGI holds up even in 2022. It popularized bullet time, long black trench coats, and quality visuals on a limited budget. $63 million was a lot in the late 90s, but CGI was a lot more expensive too. If you wanted to create sweeping landscapes and fantastical superheroes, you needed a talented visual effects team in deep pockets. Compared to the original, the sequels had much larger $150 million budgets. And when you rewatch the trilogy, you can tell that the Wachowskis used every penny to make the sequels as flashy as possible, but the CGI at some points is just not what we'd hoped. Now don't get us wrong, they put a lot of work into it and the CGI looks respectable, but let's compare it to The Return of the King. It had a much lower $94 million budget, a much longer runtime, and was released in the same year as Revolutions. Not only did Return of the King have more believable CGI, but it was also arguably more epic in terms of scale. Oh, and even the Star Wars prequels that were released around the same time as the first Matrix and Re Loaded had some of the most innovative visuals of the time. The Matrix sequels have had a lot of flaws, but we care about one thing in this video, inconsistent CGI. But that's where the in-universe explanation comes in. Coming up is the theory, the Matrix itself has rendering problems. Apparently, Neo and Agent Smith are just too powerful for the Matrix rendering engine. When Neo starts fighting a few Smiths at a time, the CGI doubles look decent enough. But the longer the fight goes on, and the more Smith clones join, the worse the CGI becomes. Eventually, Neo and the Smiths start looking a little rubbery. Their character models look too smooth, and the cloth simulation gives up. If you look at Neo's clothes, there are no creases, imperfections, or even dust. But Reddit user Luiseg came up with a genius theory that the Matrix's rendering engine just can't keep up with the two men, or should we say, programs. You see, when you create an entire universe within a computer, you start by coding it into existence. What are the rules? How many players can there be in a single area? How large is the area? And how much bandwidth can you allocate to make the program programs run effectively. Now that you've explained the rules, you make sure that the program understands these rules. It's just like a game engine pumping out tens of hundreds of frames per second on your screen. Even this video uses the processing power in your CPU or GPU. Now, would a highly advanced system really struggle rendering multiple Smiths? The short answer is yes. It would 100% struggle with rendering thousands of Agent Smiths because of one reason. He's the rogue program. He was unplugged by Neo at the end of the first movie, so he no longer needs to follow the rules set up by the architect when he made the Matrix. At this point in the movie, the Smith is like a GTA 5 mod, except he's got a bug in him too. The Matrix just can't handle the hundreds of Smith clones in one concentrated area. It doesn't have the GPU power or bandwidth to churn out those HD visuals, so like any video game, it switches from quality to performance. The Matrix needs to keep the frame rate even so it sacrifices quality and we get sloppy CGI. And you know what? We like that theory. It's a cool way to explain how the system works and that even something as powerful as the Matrix can have rendering issues when it's overloaded. This even explains the PS2 looking CGI when Neo saves Morpheus and the Keymaker from the exploding truck on the highway. The Matrix can deal with the explosion without a problem, that's in the code, but Neo's speed is the problem. The Matrix can't deal with anomalies, and programs like Neo and Agent Smith, just like the hosts in Westworld, can't deal with unscripted conversations. Up next, we're looking at fan theories about the Matrix that didn't pan out. The rendering theory is fun and all, but there are several other fan theories that the Matrix Resurrections proved wrong. First, the theory that Sati is the new oracle of the Matrix. The Matrix Revolutions put a real emphasis on Sati's relationship with Neo. She was created when two programs and we're not sure if we want to think about what that means. According to Matrix's rules, Sati was a useless program serving no purpose. So she scheduled for deletion, but her parents bargained for her life. The Oracle helps save her from exile because she believes Sati is important. Then at the end of the movie, Sati creates a beautiful sunrise, implying that she can change the Matrix's appearance at will. That's why people thought she'd be replacing the Oracle in Resurrections. But the Wachowskis had other ideas. She instead became a strategist who helped Neo break Trinity out of the Resurrection pod. It'd be really cool if she did become a new oracle of the system, but sadly the whole program got deleted from the latest version of The Matrix. 
Up next, Neo and Trinity survived in the third movie. Revolutions had a bittersweet ending at best. Neo sacrificed his mind and body in order to bring Smith down once and for all, and Trinity died trying to protect Neo. It's a Shakespearean tragedy for the modern age, but some folks refused to believe that they were dead. In fact, Reddit users suggested that they were both assimilated inside the Matrix. Basically, the Matrix stored their minds inside its source code. That way, they were essentially immortal inside the system, waiting to be called again once it rebooted. But no, they really did die in revolutions. They only came back to life because of Rama, the program responsible for creating the new resurrection pods. He's the analyst's chief engineer for the Matrix, and more importantly, he's Sati's dad. Now for an infamous Morpheus theory. He was the villain all along. This isn't a popular theory, but people still love talking about it on Reddit and YouTube. The theory goes that Morpheus was just another program created by the architect to lure humans who become too suspicious of the simulation. They start to find cracks in the wall and weird glitches, so Morpheus shows up with his rogues gallery and infects their minds. You're in the Matrix. The real world's inside it. Take the blue pill and continue being an or take the red pill and learn the truth. He doesn't really give you a choice, does he? If you take the blue pill, your memory gets wiped and you're back to where you started. But if you take the red pill, you're put in a level deeper. And that means that both Machine City and Zion are also part of the second level. W wait, is that why Neo can stop the Sentinels? But, but hold up, that's not the case. Resurrections established that the Matrix Online is canon, so that means Morpheus died decades before the latest movie. It also means he's human and not a villainous program trapping humans in a deeper level of the Matrix. Finally, a fan favorite, Smith was never the one. Matt Pat from Game Theorist did an awesome video on this one. He came up with a theory that put Agent Smith as the one, not Neo. After watching his video, we were pretty convinced that Smith could have saved humanity without even meaning to. So is Smith the one? Well, here are the facts. The One will be born inside the Matrix. He'll have the power to change it. He'll become a direct threat to the machines, and he'll liberate the human race from the machines. Neo fits this description, but strangely, so does Smith. After Neo kills him, he's reborn inside the Matrix and becomes unplugged. He makes the whole place unrecognizable at the end of Revolutions. And by inserting his corrupted code into Neo, he gives the machines exactly what they want. And they honor his peace deal with Zion. In fact, it's because of Smith's actions that the machines chose to broker peace the humans. So it's not just the rendering engine, the whole system can't deal with him. But here's the thing, Resurrections proved this theory wrong. We so wanted this to be right, but the only reason Smith came back into the Matrix was that the analyst revived Neo and uploaded him into the Matrix. Neo still had the corrupted Smith code inside him, but the analyst needed Neo. He didn't need Smith. Smith's only purpose is to continue being rogue, and that's why he switches sides and helps Neo and Trinity in the end. It's still a genius theory though. And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for watching. So do you think a system as advanced as the Matrix would have rendering issues? And what do you think about Agent Smith being the one? Tell us down below. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos in the future. See you in the next one.